Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, my name is Anthony Williams. I'm the Senior Market Segment Manager here at Comet. Um, I will be joined today by my colleague, Marcel Odermont. Marcel is the Product uh, Manager for the Mesofocus Technology and the Ivario uh, Generator uh, platform that the Tube runs on. A few words about Comet Industrial X-Ray. We are a premier developer and manufacturer of metal ceramic X-ray tubes and generator sets. We've been in business for over 70 years and we have offices uh, located throughout the globe. New technologies like additive manufacturing and high demand for detection and measurement of small features especially in aerospace and automotive parts, ask for high resolution. And at the same time, the inspection systems need to be used in a production environment or at least higher throughput. And so what we're trying to always balance is the need between resolution and inline inspection. And to date, what customers have had to accept is a trade-off. Um, <clears throat> as you're aware, we have uh, the X HP 11 tubes, which is a sealed mini focus tubes. Uh, here, uh, resolutions go from about 100 micrometers to a few millimeters. And uh, on the other side of the landscape, uh, when you go for resolution, the ch uh, sole choice to date has been open microfocus which does provide very excellent high resolution, um, but uh, tends to be more ideal for a lab environment uh, just due to uh, some complexities in how um, it's the tube is maintained and operated, right? But here, uh, typically when you look for resolutions below 100 micrometer to um, one or two, uh, micrometers or in nanofocus where you would go below uh, one micron. So it creates a gap, right? And so what the mesofocus technology does is it fills that gap. And what is mesofocus technology? It's a sealed microfocus tube that fits within the production space, right? Uh, giving you resolutions from 100 micrometer down to 25 micrometer. It is uh, not a uh, um, replacement for open microfocus, right? Uh, open microfocus is still the best tool when you need to go below 20 micrometer resolution. So if you need a spatial resolution of 10 micrometer, four micrometer, you definitely need open microfocus, but if you are looking um, at uh, resolutions or features you want to detect and measure features that are above 25 micrometers, but less than 100 micrometers, then uh, mesofocus technology does fill that gap. And at this point, what I'd like to do is introduce my colleague, Marcel Odermont. I'll turn the presentation over to him and he will take you through the technology in more detail. Marcel. Thank you, Anthony. So for the mesofocus, uh, what we have heard, we have on one side uh, the, the great capability of the seal tubes, uh, which perform well in production. And we have on the other side, the resolution, uh, which uh, is delivered by uh, open microfocus tube. And here for the mesofocus, our concept was to uh, combine the, the best out of the two worlds. On one side, the hassle-free and the uh, robust sealed uh, metal ceramic X-ray technology, uh, which is made for production environment with the excellent uh, resolution capabilities 
on the other side uh, provided from open micro focus tubes and we will have now a look what we got out of this next slide please so there are the two sides there is on one side the resolution you need to see what you need to see but uh, at the other side there is the inline uh, capability uh, how it performs in production let's now have first a look at the resolution side on the resolution with the mesofocus technology we have uh, presettings of focus spot we see here the three presettings we have in this uh, mesofocus uh, 225 kv tube on on the top that's an image of the focus spot how it looks like it's very round it's very symmetric uh, you have a very good uh, energy or dose uh, distribution over the over the focal spot and then uh, on the focal spot measurement with the penny method the astm you see the focus it's, uh, it's a little bit small to see but what you what you uh, see here is the 50 micrometer focal spot 130 micrometer focal spot and 200 micrometer focal spot all very symmetric and very round power is always one watt per micrometer means at 50 micrometer uh, you have 50 watt 130 micrometer focal spot delivers uh, 130 watt and then the 200 micrometer with a 200 watt on the resolution side that's important to keep in mind we have always uh, what we can resolve is always half of the focal spot size in double wire, it means uh, down to D16 on the 50 micrometer focal spot or uh, 25 uh, micrometer. Next slide, please. Another uh, very important feature of this uh, mesofocus tube is the wide uh, field of view. We got a 20 degree target, which uh, allows us to uh, have a 20 degree in each direction uh, field of view means plus and minus uh, 20 degree 40 degrees along the tube axis and uh, 40 degrees uh, perpendicular to the tube axis and this allows to to resolve on one side to have bigger parts inspected that uh, inspected at one shot or uh, get a, a better uh, uh, magnification next slide please this slide here shows a, a comparison typical comparison between a, a micro focus and meso focus we have aligned it uh, on the axis on the horizontal axis on the resolution so 50 micrometer of resolutions on the very left side uh, there we see it's uh, about the same so microfocus, mesofocus, both perform well with 50 watt, 50 micrometer or 25 micrometer of resolution. Of course, as uh, Anthony mentioned at the beginning, if you need to see smaller details, if you need to resolve 10 micrometers, five micrometers, the open microfocus provides the possibility what the mesofocus does not. However, Mesofocus has then big advantage when it goes up in power. So at 200 watt, the red marked ones there, at 200 watt on the mesofocus, that's uh, the same focal spot we get with a microfocus tube with 130 watt. And also the, the shape, you can see it, it gets, uh, it gets a bit blurry, it gets a bit uh, unsymmetric. Microfocus tends then to to no more have this very nice uh, focal spot where uh, mesofocus still uh, delivers. Next slide, please. In short, the specification which uh, belongs to the resolution side of the balance, we got these three focal spots: 50, 130, and 200 micrometer. Always at one watt per micrometer. Uh, of power means 50 watt 130 watt 200 watt then a wide kv range 
which is uh, very interesting and very important also, especially when you need to inspect uh, composite materials, lightweight materials in combination with metallic parts. Then uh, with one tube, you can use uh, uh, one tube to, to inspect uh, all parts of a component. Then the target angle, which uh, delivers a very, very homogeneous and uh, wide uh, field of view. Uh, next, please. Yes, that was the uh, resolution side. Now, resolution is one thing, but what we want to achieve with this concept of the mesofocus technology is uh, resolution in inline inspection throughput 24 seven. And now let's have a look uh, what it means uh, for this uh, side of the balance. So the mesofocus tube is made for high uptime. It is a reliable and proven sealed tube technology. Everyone knows it, the HP 11 tubes, all the metal, ceramic, the sealed tubes, they perform very well, even in harsh environment. They are built for 24 seven operation. There is almost no maintenance uh, required. You don't need a frequent service intervention. It's just, uh, yeah, you can switch it on and switch it off when you don't need it anymore. And on the next day, you can start inspection again without a lot of, uh, a lot of conditioning or maintenance. And this at the end all saves cost and time. Why? Already with the installation, it's very, it's very easy. The tube is, uh, is easy in configuration. It's hassle-free in, in, uh, in the installation. It can be uh, installed in, in all direction. It can even be moved on a, on a, on a robot arm. It bases on the, on the known and proven uh, sealed tube technology, sealed X-ray modules. And that gives you at the end uh, optimized cost uh, through uh, less maintenance uh, required, no conditioning required with the, the focal spot presets also, which, uh, which allows a very good uh, resolution, very good uh, image quality right away without the need uh, of, of, uh, of conditioning and then frequent uh, recalibration. In short, the specification here, uh, belonging to the to the inline and throughput uh, side of the balance, uh, we have the tube lifetime specified up to more than twenty five thousand hours on the smallest focal spot, and still more than uh, ten thousand hour at uh, two hundred watt. Then uh, a very very. Uh, smooth and, uh, and, and small dose rate decrease, only, only 8% over 100,000 cycles. We have a, a great uh, stability in, in the emission and also the focal spot drift since the presettings can also be changed from one to the other by software. It's very important that they have little drift and that they also have their center at the same point. So that means when you need to do inspection, we will see examples afterwards uh, where, where you change over focal spots uh, during an inspection. Uh, it does not need a recalibration because the uh, focal spot is exactly on the same place, doesn't uh, move on the target. Okay, that's, uh, that's now the two sides, resolution side we have covered, uh, combined with the throughput, the inline inspection uh, capability. And uh, now let's have a look uh, who might uh, benefit from this evolution in X-ray technology. For this uh, part, I will hand back to Anthony. He will take you through typical applications and uh, and uh, some examples where the mesofocus performs best. 
Thank you, Marcel. Thank you for that. Just once again, a reminder, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A function. The chat function has been disabled, All right? Uh, so one of the <clears throat> areas where we see an excellent fit for the technology is in aerospace. In this uh, particular image, we're showing a uh, turbine blade. Um, and what you're able to see is that uh, with one tube, we're able to image not only the upper portion of the blade, uh, but also the heel or lower portion of the blade and see the channels within there. So uh, this is done with one tube, uh, just changing the focal spot size. Uh, so in um, what we did was we did the upper portion or fan portion of the blade, <clears throat> excuse me, running at 225 kV with a 50 micrometer focal spot size. And we were clearly able to see uh, the features that are present. And then we ran the heel or the lower portion of the blade with uh, at the same 225 kV, but changing the focal spot size to 200 micrometers. Uh, and that gives us 200 watts of power. And you're able to do uh, the blade with one tube um, quite often you'll see a dual tube situations for doing blade analysis. So this uh, is a significant cost savings being able to do that uh, simply with one tube. Within the automotive industry uh, is also another uh, great uh, example uh, for the technology. Here we have a motorcycle cover and you can clearly see that throughout the cover that you don't there are no defects that are present, um, whether you're using 2D or 3D analysis. Also uh, within automotive, uh, if we look at uh, this particular example is with uh, plas is a plastic, excuse me, an aluminum part, uh, not plastic, excuse me, aluminum. And uh, what we did here is uh, we're showing where we ran the part at 200 micrometer or 200 watts and uh, then switch focal spot size and did it again at 50 micrometers, 50 watts. And so what we're showing here side by side is just that at the 200 micrometer, you are able to see that uh, the, you have features, right? But at uh, the 50 micrometers, you're uh, able to discern those features in more detail and uh, clearly see what is there. So you get a deeper understanding by being able to simply change focal spot size. Another area where we see a nice advantage of the technology is in welding. So here you can see the seam and see where the materials come together. Um, in this particular example, it isn't to, uh, what we're trying to show is that mesofocus uh, can detect the same features that open microfocus is uh, detecting. So here is a uh, tube weld that's uh, 25.4 millimeters in diameter, has a wall thick thickness of 3.175 millimeters. We ran it at 120 kV and at 50 watts or 50 micrometers. And what we're showing is that the mesofocus tube was able to detect the very same uh, fe known features and defects that are in the tube weld. Um, and uh, this is a, a um, sample that a very large aerospace manufacturer uses um, just to check the uh, the capabilities of uh, the, the open microfocus to be able to identify and discern all the features, wanted to do the same with the mesofocus. So just simply showing that uh, we are able to um, detect all of the same uh, feature sizes. Another uh, area where um, the technology comes into play is in additive manufacturing, right? So, um, to date, uh, a lot of companies have been using additive manufacturing 
but uh, in terms of uh, testability of the parts, being able to do so in a production environment, uh, as long as they're looking for defects um, from a few hundred uh, uh, microns or a few millimeters down to 100 micrometers, they are able to do, but typically when they were looking for features, whether that was porosity or uh, measuring those or uh, calculating the volume of the porosity, for example, or um, heat uh, uh, tears or cracks, um, you know, typically you would use open microfocus below 100 micrometers. Uh, but was often done in the lab because uh, of uh, the, 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 sometimes the complexity that open microfocus can have uh, in terms of conditioning and how you have to treat it. And uh, so uh, now you're able to do so in a more of a production environment. What we're showing here in this uh, stainless steel um, rotor pump is uh, if we're looking at the rotor blades, we can clearly see here that at 130 micrometers, we see that there is something, right? We change the focal spot size down to 50 micrometers, and we clearly see that, yes, we have a defect, and now we're able to do any type of morphological or metrological measurements, right? Uh, these here uh, are not defects, but it is, um, examples of where 225 kV is not fully penetrating the part. Um, and so, uh, as many of you know, with additive manufacturing, higher uh, energy ranges are required for full penetration of the part. And we will be employing the same technology and going to higher kVs, such as 450 kV, um, in future. So we intend uh, to take this technology first as being applied to 225 kV, but we'll be going to 450 kV um, next, year, next year. Another <clears throat> perfect example for the technologies in batteries, as uh, you may know, the uh, EV marketplace is experiencing significant growth, um, you know, within the automotive industry. You also have a lot of uh, battery growth in wearables. Um, so uh, you just see very high demand for 2D and 3D inspection. And this is another arena where uh, the technology can be applied. Uh, in this particular case here, excuse me, we're showing examples of a smartphone battery pack. Right, uh, but certainly uh, doesn't matter if it's a smartphones or if it's electric vehicles. Uh, basically, you can detect and measure um, things like the anode or cathode overhang for pouch and or prismatic cells, as well as detect gas bubbles. Um, if there's any foreign objects within the material, uh, welding defects, um, you know, electrode cracks and electrolyte filling, right? Uh, it can also be used in the analysis of cell alignment, resin filling, um, connections or dimensional accuracy in larger ESS and uh, EV modules. The, um, as Marcel indicated, the unit is designed and developed for 24 by seven operation. So if you have high um, volume demand um, for doing inline production testing, uh, this is perfect for it. You can run three shifts. Um, and uh, as we indicated earlier in the presentation, um, lifetime of uh, the uh, module is based upon, uh, can be fully predicted and is based upon uh, usage parameters. So uh, depending on the feature sizes that you're trying to detect and measure, it can last anywhere from 10,000 to in excess of 25,000 hours uh, of operation, depending on um, the parameters being used. Also, it's perfect for being used with uh, robots. So 
Um, not a problem in using it uh, and manipulating uh, the uh, tube around uh, parts. Also within electronics, but not, I mean, certainly can be used for printed circuit boards, uh, but uh, we see it more in electromechanical assembly where you have the complexity of uh, electromechanics along with electronic uh, circuits or sensors. And uh, in this particular example, we have a sensor we are showing the three preset focal spot sizes. Um, as Marcel indicated, we have anywhere from 50 micrometer to 130 and 200 micrometers. And it's one, uh, it's an isowatt uh, tube. So one watt uh, per one micrometer. And uh, what we're showing here is that if you look and you see at 200 micrometers, you're definitely seeing uh, something in the image. You change focal spot size to 130 micrometers. As you change focal spot size, no conditioning, uh, no adjustments, just go ahead and collect the image, change and run. And we see um, more detail. And if we change focal spot size once more, we're in, go down to 50 micrometer, we're able to see uh, far more detail, make uh, any type of uh, metrology uh, measurements that you need to make. The tube is highly stable um, and it is uh, cooled uh, through a, the use of a cooler. So um, high stability, high repeatability. Um, here, what we're showing in this uh, image on the right is the sensor, the entire plastic housing and uh, the contact materials showing that everything is visible within the image. Not only is the technology suitable for high density parts, but it is also suitable for low density parts. In this particular image, we have a uh, <clears throat> carbon fiber bicycle rim uh, that we ran at 60 kV with the 50 micrometer focal spot size once again, 50 micrometer at 50 watts of power. Uh, and you're able to see that we can see the flaws within the rim uh, along the contact surface of the brake pads. So whether the material is a fiber or ceramic or plastic uh, to far more dense materials, the technology is perfect. Uh, for that. So it gives you a lot of versatility for aerospace, welding, uh, additive manufacturing, uh, automotive applications, whether those be batteries, electromechanical assemblies, um, most certainly a very versatile um, module uh, uh, for a wide variety of applications. And once again, uh, just want to reiterate that uh, we are not saying that the mesofocus is a one-to-one -one replacement for open microfocus. What we are saying is that there are, um, open microfocus does have a fit. Uh, so if you do need to be able to detect and measure uh, you know, features below 25 micrometers, then open microfocus is absolutely the right tool. However, if your needs are, are more in the 50, 60, 25, uh, 100 micrometer range, then we're saying that the mesofocus may be a better fit uh, for that uh, technology, right? <clears throat> So um, in closing, uh, what it delivers to you, the uh, end user is high power um, and system availability uh, to start. So um, the very first time that you would uh, take delivery of the tube, uh, there would be a, a typical warm up, but um, when you're using the tube normally, uh, during operation, no warm up, no conditioning is required. Turn it on and uh, run at full power. 
Um, and so, you know, unlike open microfocus where you have to uh, have a warm up, uh, you just uh, turn the tube on and it's ready to run and operate and you have full power at all times, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's highly reliable, repeatable, and, and uh, extremely accurate. You have high flux rates uh, with the tube. And um, as Marcel uh, mentioned, you have very low maintenance. The only thing that would be required in a single shift operation once a year is supply silicone paste uh, to the high voltage cable. Uh, in a three shift environment, you may want to do that twice a year uh, in six month increments, as opposed to once per annum. So uh, very low total cost of ownership. Um, there are no uh, wear parts, no filaments to replace, no target material to replace, O-rings or anything like that. Uh, very easy for unskilled use by unskilled operators. So uh, what we've tried to show here is that the mesofocus provides a excellent balance between resolution and high throughput or inline inspection. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, we have done so to your satisfaction. At this point, I'd like uh, to ask Marcel to join me uh, and uh, we would like to open this up uh, to you to uh, answer any questions that you have.